Well, we are seeing shares of Sonos popping in this session after the company beat estimates on earnings. First quarter revenue for Sonos came in at $664.5 million. Speaker re revenue fell just slightly because of supply constraints, but the company saw strong performance from its system components, including port and amp devices. Let's bring in the CEO of Sonos. Patrick Spence is joining us today. And Patrick, let's start right there with the supply constraints, a conversation we've had before. Where do things stand for you right now and are things improving? We definitely navigated what I think is the probably the toughest quarter I've seen uh, in the last 20 years. And we were able to successfully navigate that and deliver uh, more for our customers and exceed expectations, which just is a testament to our amazing team and the work that they've done. And I do think that the worst is behind us. Um, you know, it'll get better progressively over the year. But I think the other thing is, We've navigated it better than most companies. Again, the outstanding work of our team. Uh, so that gave us confidence given the demand we're seeing and as well our ability to navigate that to increase the midpoint of our guidance for the rest of the year. So uh, we're feeling good coming off uh, what was a very challenging quarter. Hey, Patrick, Brian Chung here. I know what might be supporting that guidance is the price increases that you implemented. I believe it was back in September. But tell us about the elasticity that you have for perhaps future price increases, because what, 46 percent of your existing households came back to add another uh, Sonos product. Obviously, the ecosystem very strong there. Um, do you feel like you have more flexibility around those price points? Or are you worry that raising prices more might get people to start turning away? Yeah, Brian, you hit on one of the most important things that really powers, you know, the unique thing about Sonos is our business model. We're not a one and done kind of purchase company. Um, you know, what happens la last year, 46% of our existing customers came back and added an additional product, right? And that's incredibly powerful. Our average home is now up to uh, three products, but we believe that can grow from there, you know, into four to six products over time. And they tell their friends and family all about Sonos and that generates new homes, which then come back and buy more over time. So we have this amazing flywheel um, and business model. And you know, over the past uh, 10 years uh, at Sonos, we've had increased prices three or four times uh, and our customers continue to buy. And like you pointed out, we anticipated this inflation. I don't think anybody you know, was surprised by today's inflation read. We all knew that was coming. Um, so we did increase prices. We try to always strike that balance, right? As you, you know, you hear from most uh, companies in terms, in terms of trying to find that right price point where we're delivering as much value as we can for our customers. We're driving that innovation all the time. Um, we did that in anticipation of some of the costs going up and, and some of the things that we're seeing. And so we're very well positioned right now. Uh, and the consumer is really strong. Like we have a backlog. We could have sold a lot more in the quarter, um, you know, and so our customer uh, seems to have a lot of strength right now. Patrick, I want to get back to what you said earlier about this being, you know, one of your toughest quarters. I think you said the toughest quarter. I mean, what's unique about all of these headwinds that have formed? Uh, we're talking about price increases, supply constraints, trying to figure out whether, in fact, you pass it down to customers. I mean, you talk a bit uh, about that and how what you're seeing right now is so unique when you compare it to some of the other challenges you've experienced within your company over the years. Yeah, well, I think the, um, you know, having been in, tech um, and tech, you know, it's really smart hardware uh, for 25 years. It, we just saw with the pandemic, right, such a stop. It was such a startling moment where a lot of manufacturing and component uh, generation kind of slowed down. And then all of a sudden, because people continued to buy, it all ramped back up, right? And so the, hence the inflation we've seen, hence the all the supply chain challenges that we've seen. And so that's why I say this particular quarter, and it's different for different companies. Um, we navigated it better than expected, but it was just super challenging in terms of trying to get the components, the container shortages, the port congestion, COVID, right, at manufacturing facilities and through the supply chain. And that just made it incredibly challenging. Um, and why we're so pleased that we were able to navigate it and actually get more to customers, because that's the most important thing is that we've got all these customers that want more product um, and our channel partners as well, our retailers. And so we're trying to do that. And that's what we're really working on every day. But we feel like, you know, the worst is behind us on that front. Um, but it, it is, as you said, um, you know, been the, the most challenging period that we've seen. Um, and I've just been so pleased by the kind of innovation um, and as well, the work that the team's done to make sure that we could navigate it.
Patrick, what kind of social trends do you see also driving some of the trends you're seeing in the business? Because, you know, people moved a lot during the pandemic. I moved during the pandemic. And the first thing I thought of when I moved in was I got to get some speakers to supplement this uh, terrible speaker in my flat screen. So um, is that also driving some of the momentum that you've seen? And, you know, given the Omicron variant fading now, now that people are settled into maybe places that they've moved into, is that actually going to be perhaps a headwind to your business? So it, it, we really see like three big macro trends that are helping, you know, kind of fuel our growth for, you know, the next, let's say the next five, 10 years. One is the golden age of audio. So we're seeing, you know, podcasts exploding like crazy, uh, more streaming music. We're seeing, you know, TikTok uh, shaped music. So a lot's going on in audio in general. And so there's more listening happening. And, and obviously that's where we play. Um, you hit on something with TV and a big trend, Hollywood at home, right? You hear Disney investing 33 billion this year in content, Netflix 20 billion billion. Those numbers are only going up. There's only more great content that's going to come to your home. And if you want to enjoy that content in all its great audio fidelity, you want Sonos. And then finally, um, work from home is a trend, Brian, that I think is going to last for a long time. We're seeing more and more companies and more startups, right, as a result of all of this. And they're saying people can live anywhere. And we're seeing more people leave the cities. I don't think that's a one-time event. I think it's a really big macro trend that happens over a number of years. And if you're working at home, one of the things that you want is some great sound in your house. And, you know, you're, if you're alone, you want some music, like all of these things. And so I think that is something that's really going to power um, our growth over the coming years. <laughs> Patrick, you want to come on to be our analyst for Netflix and Disney next quarter? Sounds like you're eager to talk. <laughs> Man, you had those numbers ready. But Patrick Spence, a Sonos CEO, congrats on the quarter. And thanks again for stopping by.